Hi, my name is Kristen and I'm the program coordinator for the Rethink Runoff's Dream Team. Our goal is to educate people in the greater Burlington area about what they can do to help keep Lake Champlain clean. There are lots of small things you can do to help increase the water quality of our stream and stormwater runoff. Something really simple is to pick up your pet waste or plant a tree in your yard. And to learn about lots of things that you can do to help improve stormwater quality, you can visit our website at www.rethinkrunoff.org. Today, we'll be talking about how to build a rain barrel. You'll be able to find a printable PDF on our website that includes all of the materials, steps to build the barrel, and steps for installation. So let's get started. So a rain barrel is a tool that helps you capture rainwater as it comes off your roof so that you can use it later to wash your tools or water your lawn or water a flower garden. And an added benefit is that it means that that water won't be washing out over impervious surfaces, potentially collecting pollutants and bringing those pollutants to our storm drains and thereby to our surface waters and our lakes. So it's a great thing to do for your own home and garden and also a great thing to do for the water quality in Lake Champlain. So let's take a look at what we need to build this barrel. So there's a few things that you'll need to build a rain barrel. Got them all laid out here. The first thing is a hacksaw, a sharpie for marking, some plumber's tape to help seal and make sure that we have a tight seal on our spigot, a boiler drain spigot, usually a half inch, a half inch by quarter inch hose barb, a soft fit vent louver or just a piece of screen if you have some extra screen around to prevent mosquitoes from entering the barrel and breeding. Some caulk, again, to make sure we have a nice tight seal. A couple of hose washers and a rigid locking nut. Other tools that might come in handy for our creation or for installation will be tin snips, an adjustable wrench, <laughs> safety goggles, gloves, and I would recommend that you look at the PDF to get the exact dimensions, but three hole saws that will match the three sizes of holes that we will need to drill. So those holes will be for this piece, this piece, and this piece. So you can really make it with any size of these materials as long as you have the right hole saw to match the outer diameter of your materials. And finally, um, you'll want this sump pump hosing tubing for our overflow hole. And of course, last but not least, you'll need a barrel. So we like to find these recycled. Um, this barrel used to hold tomato paste. We've been able to find them with some local food distributors. You might also be able to go on Craigslist and find some barrels that have been used before, um, or there are certainly plenty that you can buy new. So that's what you'll need to get started. So the first step is we need to make a place for the water to enter our rain barrel. Now I like to use a Sharpie to mark out where I'm drilling, even if it's a little obvious. So I'm gonna go ahead and put an X just about in the middle of the top of my rain barrel. And we are drilling a hole to fit this soft fit louver vent into the top. So it's four inches. We'll get our four inch hole saw. Now these hole saws do have a lot of torque. So you're gonna to wanna to be very careful, um, have a steady hand. If you're under 18, you'll definitely want a parent to help you with all of the power tool parts, especially this step. So I'll just line up my drill and sort of firmly drilling. So we've got our hole. Once your hole is cut, you can just go ahead and fit the lure vent right in and you're ready to go. Next step, we'll create our overflow hole. This is to make sure that if your barrel fills up all the way, it'll have somewhere to divert the water to so that it doesn't run into your foundation. So I have here a three quarter inch hole saw to match the three quarter inch outer diameter of my overflow spigot. And I'll go ahead and mark pretty close to the top where I'd like to drill the hole. And then again, 
We'll carefully drill this hole. Depending on the thickness of your barrel plastic, this may take a little time, so be patient. So now that you've got your matching sized hole, you can just go ahead and twist your hose barb into the overflow hole. And it might take a little bit of elbow grease, but you do want to make sure that it's a nice tight fit. I found while I was doing this, there was a little section that was catching, so I just took a rasp and filed down the section that was catching. But you do want it to be quite tight. That should be pretty good. So if you have two sawhorses, you can do this piece a little bit more professionally, but a chair and table will do just fine. You'll take your hacksaw, and you want to cut about an eight foot piece of this overflow piping. Um, usually it's sold in 24 foot lengths. And so there's a natural break in the middle where you can go ahead and saw that eight foot length. Can you zoom in? Then we'll simply take either end of our thumb pump hose and fit it onto the end of the hose barb. Again, this should take a little bit of force so that it's nice and tight. Give it a tug and you're all set so that the water in your rain barrel can divert somewhere away from your foundation if it overflows. All right, so the next step is to drill the hole that we'll put the spigot in. And before you do this, if you have the opportunity to consider where on your house you would like this rain barrel to go, it might help you decide where to put the spigot in relation to the overflow. So at this house, we're putting the overflow out into this lovely section of lawn. If you have a rain garden, it's a great place to overflow to. You certainly don't want the overflow to go out to uh, your driveway or anywhere else that it will start to run over impervious surfaces and into our uh, stormwater system. So if we're putting the overflow here, um, we'll put the spigot just about here so that it'll be easy to access once we connect the barrel to the gutter. For the next step, we'll wrap the threads of the spigot with some plumber's tape to make sure that we have a nice watertight seal. You only need to go around once or twice and break the tape. Next what I'll do is twist this into our barrel and then I want to show this to you before we get in the barrel because it will be dark. But on the inside, we'll create a sandwich where, net, where we'll put the hose washer and then we'll tighten on this locking nut so that we'll have a sandwich of this on the outside, the plastic, the hose washer, and the locking nut to create a nice tight seal. So let's get started. It's good to have a little bit of patience for this step. And try your best to screw in the spigot as straight as possible. And if you need to back it out and start over, that's okay. You're using the strength of the metal to create threads inside the plastic barrel. Now there often comes a point for me when I'm twisting this that it's really helpful to put on a working glove because it's nice to be able to grasp this sort of sharp outer edge. So, yeah. Yeah. Think that's good? Mm-hmm. Off the 
inside of our outlet. So for these barrels, they're sort of funny. Um, if you push this clasp in the reverse direction, it sort of opens it up so that you can take the metal piece off of the plastic top. And this part can be pretty fun. You can set the barrel on a table to make this a little bit easier. Or, if you're feeling brave, or if you've got uh, a kid who's willing to help, who can crawl into the barrel and do the next piece, then uh, that's, a, that's a great strategy. So I'll be crawling in here and putting the washer, the rubber washer, on the inside of the spigot. And then I'll be hand tightening this locking nut on the outside. And potentially, um, I might use some tools to tighten it a little bit more if it doesn't feel nice and snug. measure you may want to put a couple beads of caulk around the outside here to make it extra waterproof and you'll want to wait uh, follow the instructions on the bottle usually anywhere between one hour and 24 hours to make sure that it's fully cured before you put any water in your rain barrel but at this point your rain barrel is pretty much ready to go let's talk about how to install it so now we're going to install our rain barrel and this will look different depending on where you choose to put it um, the method that we're choosing to use today is stacking some cinder blocks on top of each other so that we can elevate the rain barrel, both so that there's enough room underneath to put a watering can so that you can actually get the water out of here, or more importantly, to add a little bit of height so that the gravity fed pressure coming from the spout um, will provide you with enough water pressure if you wanted to hook up a garden hose to actually be able to send a trickle of water out to other parts of your property. So to install this, you're going to need an arrangement of cinder blocks that matches the size of the base of your barrel. You may need a level. You may need a shovel if you need to uh, even out the ground area that you're going to install it on. You'll bring back your handy hacksaw for actually installing the gutter itself. And then you can either use uh, elbow joints or what we'll be using today is a flexible gutter extender. Because we'll be dealing with sharp metal, we definitely recommend using gloves for safety and also grabbing a piece of cardboard that you can put behind the gutter to protect the house as you're drilling. And last but not least, safety goggles. So we've gone ahead and bent our flexible gutter extender into the shape that we think we'd like it to be so that it will end up in this barrel. And then I took a sharpie and marked the top of where this gutter extender will be. And usually you want to measure down about two inches and that's where you'll make your cut so that there's enough room to slip the gutter extender on so that it will connect well. You would do the same thing if you were just adding a simple metal elbow where you could cut and then attach the elbow inside of it if that were the route that you wanted to take. Then you would do it a little bit lower for your barrel. So we'll take a piece of scrap cardboard and put it behind here so that we don't damage the siding on the house. And then go ahead and cut our line. There we go. So you can see after measuring where to cut our gutter, we added this hose gutter extender and then actually use this brace that was lower down on the house to attach the extender onto the metal gutter. You could also just use three screws and screw them in on each face of the gutter, and that would also keep this in place. All right, so I've determined the location for the barrel. I've laid down a base of these smaller square concrete pieces, um, and then I've added just four cinder blocks on top. So this should make a nice strong base. This barrel when it's full could weigh anywhere between 400 and 500 pounds. 
So you want to make sure that it's on a very solid base um, before you allow it to get filled up with rainwater. Some people also choose to build a wooden base um, out of either pressure treated wood or some type of wood that will really fold up over time outside. So you could also choose to do that if you like how it looks better. Now we're ready to lift our rain barrel onto the platform. Place our overflow vent wherever we would like it to go. Adjust our adjustable gutter extender. So that it will outlet into the top of your rain barrel. And you're pretty much ready to go. So after your next rainstorm, your barrel will fill up. And then you can use a watering can, or like I said, you can attach a hose to this. And you're starting to collect rainwater for your garden, for washing your tools, uh, for cleaning your car. So when the first frost comes, the best way to prepare your rain barrel for winter is to detach it from your gutter system drain all of the water out of it and then either store it upside down so that it doesn't collect any water that will freeze over the winter or if you have the space store it empty in your garage or in your basement and then the piece of gutter that you hack sawed off you'll want to reconnect for the winter just in case there are any thaws so that the water coming out of this lingering piece of gutter will be redirected away from the foundation of your house and then in the spring you can reattach whatever elbow or attachment piece you had on in the first place, and the rain barrel will be back up and running again. So for more tips on how to be clean water friendly, visit our website, www.rethinkrunoff.org. And if you've enjoyed watching this video and you've decided to make a barrel, um, feel free to send us an email, rethinkrunoff at gmail.com, and we would love to see the creation that you've made. Thanks so much.